Welcome to the Children's Corner Sew Along. Today we are going to make the April. I'm going to make the view that does not have this mocked insertion, but does have a sash on the back. So for this view, you will need every pattern piece that has your size on it. And I'm going to go through those just really quickly here. Of course, you'll need your skirt pieces. On your skirts, the thing that you need to mark is on one of them, the one that will be for your back, there is a marking line for the placket that actually is a long, narrow V. Be sure and mark that. Then you will have your two lining pieces and there's really nothing to mark on those. You'll have your sash, and there's nothing to mark on it. Your placket strip. Your ruffle. And really, there's nothing to mark on it either. So these are the pieces that you will need to carefully mark. There's a center front and it has three dots along this edge right here. Be sure to mark those and mark them on the wrong side of your fabric. Um, this is a very lightweight lawn, and so I interfaced my bodice pieces, and there are four bodice pieces. There's a center front, a center back, a um, bodice side front, and a bodice side back. So there are dots. And this piece is cut on the fold. If you'll notice, there's two cutting lines. The shorter cutter cutting line is for the um, uh, smock view. And then there is the back. And the back has just two dots, but you will be sure to mark those on the wrong side of your fabric. And just put a little line where uh, up at the top where it says um, center back. And then you have the two side pieces and they also have dots to mark. But what you want to be sure and do is mark one of them. I marked, let's see, I think I marked my front. Yes, so I marked my front with an F because these pieces are easily, uh, can easily get mixed up. So I would just recommend keeping it, yep, the pattern piece pinned on them until we are at the point in the instructions where you'll be using those. Um, I think that's all for now. So get your fabric, get your pattern, and we'll get started in just a little bit. Okay, welcome back. We're ready to start sewing. We are gonna move along. If you wanna follow along with your instructions, you, there might be times when you wanna circle something or just make an extra note. So we actually start at step 14. All the previous uh, steps are for the smock view, except for the step one and two about cutting out and uh, doing the markings. So we're gonna go down to step 14. And the first thing we're gonna do is at the shoulder seams, you're gonna sew your center front and what's labeled your center back pieces together. So you'll have right sides together. Stitch those and then press them open. Oops, poked myself. And then step 15 is the side pieces. I'm gonna see if I can move this a little further so you can get a better view. Okay, so um, this is the back side bodice, and this is the front side bodice. Oh, one more thing to mark on the front that I didn't mention is if you are doing a sash like I am, uh, there are um, markings for where to place the sash later on. So now, we're going to take these two backs and just lay them on the table face up. And the two fronts, lay them on top of the backs with 
the right sides together. And you'll be stitching this short little shoulder seam as well. See how I have the front marked and then the back isn't marked. So it's good that you still have uh, either the front or back marked because until you get these sewn to the rest of the bodice, they still can get confused and you could have the back and the front and the front and the back. So do those seams and press those open. We're just gonna go through some basic steps and then um, you can sew a while. Then the next step for step 16 is just stitching your lining together for your bodice. And your bodice lining is just one piece for the front and one piece for the back. So stitch those and press those open and we will come back and continue sewing. Now we're ready for step 17 and 18. So you will need your ruffle pattern and before you unfold it and refold it, go ahead and mark the center of the ruffle. And you will fold it this way, long ways with wrong sides together, the raw edges even, and press. This fabric is soft and feels so good. It's a Fabric Finders Lawn and it has a sheen to it, which makes it look a little silky. So now that you've pressed it together along the curved edge where the raw edges are, um, I want you to put two gathering threads, one about an eighth of an inch from the raw edges and one about three eighths of an inch from the raw edges. And usually when I put gathering threads in, I usually use the length of four, one point, four, uh, 4.5. But for this, I used 3.5. And I find that, especially if you're working with something soft and a little bit slippery, um, that smaller stitch length allows your your um, gathers to stay in place. They don't slide around as much. And so it just makes pinning easier. And as long as when you get ready to pull out your gathering threads, and probably the, the one at the 3 8 inch mark is the only one you actually would have to pull out, just be sure you pull from that same thread that you were pulling together. After you've got your your ruffle gathering threads is stitched to have your gathers pulled up um, where you put that mark, where you put that center mark on your ruffle. That's going to go right on that shoulder seam. So you'll distribute your ruffles. If you use that 3.5, your gathers won't move around as much. They'll stay um, right in place and not slip and slide. And then when you get to the end here, the end matches up with the bottom edge of the bodice. In other words, you don't have to, don't take that ruffle and pull it over to be caught in the seam there on that end. Just leave it flat and leave it right there on that bottom edge of the bottom of the bodice. Okay, I'll see you when you have got that done. Now we're ready for the bodice lining. You've already gotten your shoulder seam, uh, seam stitched, and now we are going to match the back edge, the straight edge, with the lining with the fabric. Nothing else up here is gonna match right now. So the only thing we're stitching right now 
is here and here. So do that and we'll be right back. Now that you have your ruffles sewn on, we're ready to put the side bo uh, bodice pieces. And this is where you need to be sure that you are putting the front on the front. I've already got this one on, but you need to be sure you have the front on the front. And then start by matching the shoulder seams. So your ruffle will be sandwiched between these two pattern pieces right now. I'm going to flip this this way. So you're going to be matching your dots. What we're going to do is stick a pin through the dot here and hope that it comes through the dot on the other side, almost. And then pin it in place. So you'll do that all the way down. Now your instructions say to baste the ruffle on, and honestly I forgot and just used a regular stitch length. So um, when I do the same stitching, I'm just gonna stitch right on top of my previous stitching, the one where I attached the ruffle to the center bodices. And then after you do that and stitch it on, um, the instructions really don't say to trim the seam, but I did go through and just kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, it is it is bulky through there. Then the last sentence in, well, maybe it's the next, no. In, in step 19, it says, baste the ruffle to the bodice side along the bottom edge. And what that means is you're going to press the ruffle toward the outer edge, toward the side seam, which means the seam allowance is pressed this way. So it'll be pressed that way. Your ruffle will be pressed this way. And down here at the very bottom where you've got a little bit of the end of that ruffle, what we're saying to do is to base that down to this side panel so that when we do our next steps, it doesn't get stitched down that way. So it's just to prevent that from happening. So get your, your side pieces put on, trim your seam allowance, um, base down these ends, just there and there, and then on the other side too, and then we will be back to continue on. Now that you've done those back seams, you're going to press the seam allowance toward the lining. and then fold the lining so that you can match the shoulder seam. I'm just gonna put a pin there for a minute. We're not gonna sew it that way, but um, this way you can get your crease straight and then match the side seam down here and just put another pin there for now. And then you can see that you can now press your facing in place. This is my favorite way to do bodices that are lined so that you don't see the lining at all. You just see the pretty facing that's folded to the back. So we'll do the other one. Match the neck edge. Mm -hmm. 
and get that crease pressed. Now, I'm going to take and flip your lining so that your bodice is right side out, I mean, wrong side out. Now we're going to stitch the neckline. So everything should match up now. And by the way, we are on step 21 now. So I'm going to do some more pinning, but you're going to stitch starting here at the fold line of your facing, and you're going to stitch around, pivot, go down, pivot at each corner of your neckline, back up, and end back here. Then while you still have your fabric this way, you're going to take your ruffle and push it out of the way so that you can stitch each armhole, just like it's shown in the illustration. But what you don't want to do is catch the edge of the ruffle there. So I don't have this stitched yet, but this um, ruffle is going to be sandwiched in between the neckline and the um, and the uh, armhole uh, seam. So we have to be careful not to stitch and catch the ruffle, but you are going to stitch the armhole from here all the way around to here, not down the side seams at all. So I hope you can see I have stitched um, my neckline and each armhole curve. I've trimmed all the seam allowances down to an eighth of an inch. I've clipped the corners all the way up to that stitching, just not into the stitching on those corners and on the back corners. And now we are ready to turn it right side out. So each side, each back will come through at the shoulder seam. It can be kind of a tight fit. Pull this one through. Use that point turner. Now, when I press the neckline, I'm going to press with the lining up and then just carefully roll that neck edge so that I can see a little bit of my dress fabric. And then the same with the armholes too. I hope you're enjoying the April so along and I will see you back tomorrow.